Today is a corporate meltdown on the cards. Hello again, I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to our latest post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Ten years after the Lehman bankruptcy, the financial elite is obsessed with what will send the world spiralling into the next financial crisis, as Zero Hedge discussed recently. But what would the trigger for said corporate meltdown be? And by the way, if you value the content we produce, please do consider joining our Patreon program, where you can support our ability to continue to make great content. Here is the link and it's in the comments below. According to a new report from Goldman Sachs, the most likely precipitating factor would be rising interest rates, which after the next major round of debt rollovers over the next several years in an environment of rising rates could push corporate cash flows low enough that debt can no longer be serviced effectively. While low rates in the past decade have been a boom to capital markets, pushing yield-starved investors into stocks, a dangerous side effect of this decade of rates repression has been companies eagerly taking advantage of low rates to more than double their debt levels since 2007. And like many homeowners, companies have also been able to take advantage of lower borrowing rates to drive their average interest costs lower each year this cycle until now. According to Goldman, based on the company's forecasts, 2018 is likely to be the first year that the average interest expense is expected to tick higher, even if modestly. And there is one major consequence of this transition, interest expenses will flip from a tailwind for EPS growth to a headwind on a forward basis, and in some cases will create a risk to guidance. In aggregate, total interest has increased over the course of this cycle, though it has largely lagged the overall increase in debt levels. The silver lining of the debt bubble created by central banks since the global financial crisis is that Along with refinancing at lower rates, companies have been able to generally extend maturities in recent years at attractive rates given investors search for yield, as well as a gradual flattening of the yield curve. According to Goldman's calculation, the average maturity of new issuance in recent years has averaged between 15 and 17 years, up from 11 to 13 years earlier in this cycle, and under 10 years for most of the late 1990s and early 2000s. And while this has pushed back the day when rates catch up with the overall increase in debt, as is typically the case, there is nonetheless a substantial amount of debt coming due over the next few years, according to the bank's estimates. In fact, they think there is more than $1.3 trillion of debt from non-financials through to 2020, roughly 20% of the total debt outstanding. What is different now, as rates are finally rising, is that as this debt comes due, it is unlikely that companies will be able to roll over to lower rates than they are currently paying. A second source of upward pressure on average interest expense is that the recent surge in leverage loan issuance, i.e. those companies with floating rate debt, just 9% in aggregate for large caps, but a much larger percentage of smaller caps, the Fed Fund's futures curve currently implies four more rate hikes as 100 basis points through to the end of 2019. While it is possible that some companies have hedges in place, there is still a substantial amount of outstanding bank loans directly tied to LIBOR, which will result in a far faster flow through of interest expense catching up with the income statement. While rising rates have already become a theme in several sectors such as utilities and real estate, Goldman's warns that this has the potential to be much more widespread. And while Goldman economists assign a low likelihood that this will change anytime soon, there has been a sharp pickup in the recession 2020 narrative as of late. Specifically, 
along with the growth of the fiscal deficit, which will see US debt increase to over $1 trillion next year, the fact that debt growth has outpaced EBITDA growth this cycle has implications for investors if and when the cycle turns, which brings us round circle to the potential catalyst of the next crisis rec record debt levels. According to Goldman's calculations, net debt over EBITDA for its coverage universe as a whole remains near the highest levels this cycle, if not an all-time high. And while the bank cannot pinpoint exactly when the cycle will turn, it is easy to claim that US companies are over-earning relative to their cycle average today. A key point as the Fed continues normalising its balance sheet. Indeed, this leverage picture looks even more stretched when viewed through a normalised EBITDA lens. There are two main factors that have driven this increase. Net debt has increased while cash levels have declined. And meanwhile, and touching on another prominent topic in recent months, in which many on Wall Street have highlighted the deterioration in the investment grade space, i.e. the universe of near fallen angels or companies that could be downgraded from triple B to junk. If the credit cycle turns, the cost of debt could increase with convexity suggesting that this in turn could happen fast. A sharp slowdown in the economy coupled with a major repricing of bond market risk could result in a crash in the bond market which together with the stock market has been the biggest beneficiaries of the Fed's unorthodox monetary policies. Furthermore, should companies suddenly find themselves unable to refinance debt or worse, roll over debt maturities, that would lead to a wave of corporate defaults that starts at the lowest level of the capital structure and moves its way up, impacting such supposedly safe instruments as leverage loans, which in recent months have seen an explosion in issuance due to investor demand for higher yields. This could well be the trigger to wider falls with global ramifications. Scenario four, anyone? And by the way, if you value the content we produce, please do consider joining our Patreon program, where you can support our ability to continue to make great content. And as always, if you like what you've seen here today, please share and like the post and add a comment or question. I read them all. And if you want to join the growing band of subscribers who receive alerts when we release new posts, do subscribe now by hitting the subscribe bell. And if you've already subscribed, many thanks. I really appreciate your support and participation. I'm Martin North, the Principal Analyst at Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.